That was music by Rachmaninoff, a, a selection of pieces from the Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini. It's a recording of Natasha Paremsky performing from her newest CD with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. And uh, I played that, well, not because it's music you're going to hear this weekend, but it's just to give you an idea of her playing and the power and the excitement that comes with her playing that you'll get a chance to see because I have Natasha in the studio with me this morning. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Good. Thank you for coming in at this early hour. I appreciate it. Oh, I know uh, that uh, most performers are so used to being awake at night, performing, coming alive at night. But so I know you, uh, it's, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm sure mornings I'm you've done this before. I'm trying to pull it together for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll do fine. <laughs> so again, uh, welcome to uh, Classic 107 and welcome back to Winnipeg. Thank you you. Uh, saved the day for us a couple years ago with the Winnipeg yeah. Symphony Orchestra when uh, somebody called you last minute to fill in for a uh, pianist who was not able to make it. Exactly. For the third time. And, <laughs> uh, but, you know, so we're very glad. And you wowed audiences when you came here uh, oh, a couple gosh. years ago. So we're very happy to have you back in town. And this time performing uh, different music. Last time it was Tchaikovsky, which mm-hmm. uh, this brand new disc that you have out uh, with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra has Tchaikovsky on it. And I yep. didn't play that because it's a long, a long piece, beautiful That works. would be the interview. That would be, right? exactly, that would be our interview, was it? The opening yeah. movement, 20 minutes. I wanted to play that opening <laughs> movement of 20 minutes. But uh, so you're in town to perform Gershwin. I am. Mm-hmm. Gershwin's Piano Concerto yeah. is probably one of his most serious, quote unquote, classical works, I suppose. Yeah, probably I you know, some would say the really only one, although I think a lot of Christian's music is quite serious, but mm-hmm. this is definitely a large scale. I would even hesitate to call it a concerto. I would call it more of a symphony. It's such an amazing showcase for mm-hmm. any orchestra, especially the winds and the brass. I mean, it's just like, hey, day. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You yeah. listen to it sometimes and you're like, bassoon concerto? Because <laughs> <laughs> of all the instruments and all the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, true. yeah, lots of great, great solos. So, before we start talking about more about the Gershwin piece, we'll because we'll, I'm gonna I want to play a little clip of that later. Uh, what you, well, you've been busy the last couple of years too? You've been touring uh, touring Europe and uh, just after, of course, recording this uh, this wonderful CD. And yeah. um, y- you make your home in New York now, so you uh, easier to get over to uh, to Europe from there, from your old home of California. Yes. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, I've been I've been lucky. I've had a lot of great opportunities that um, came my way, such as the CD, which I believe I recorded in 2012. So it was not long after, I guess I was here. It was just released a few months ago. You know how these things are. Yes. But, yeah. um, <laughs> so that was that was an amazing gift. Um, the um, the managing director of the RPO approached me and asked me if. You know, I have a I have a good relationship with that orchestra, and one of the first pieces I played with them was actually the Tchaikovsky First Piano Concerto, and we kind of, you know, clicked. There was a great chemistry, and so he said we definitely want to record that, and anything else you want to put on there. And so uh, that was incredible, and yeah, I've just had some really really great stuff going on, and just really grateful and grateful to be back here, and mm-hmm. just I had such an amazing time here with Alexander and the orchestra and I'm excited to come back and it's going to be really fun to play this concerto because again it's just it's such a fun collaboration so how 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 does one pre- do, you, do you prepare differently for a work like Tchaikovsky or or Gershwin because they're, they're kind of I wouldn't say opposite ends of the spectrum but they're quite different works I mean in in your preparation and in your mind, and do you prepare differently for a work uh, like Gershwin as opposed to? Uh, well, it's you definitely wear a different hat, you know. Um, a top hat. Yes, or um, <laughs> I think there, there was a there's there's a passage for the trumpet. It's a trumpet solo, and in the score, he says something like, "Play with a uh, something with a felt hat with a." tall crown or something. He does like say it. Like that. It, it actually <laughs> says that in the score. So very specific instructions in the score and very, um, very interesting orchestrations, um, somewhat reminiscent of some Rachmaninoff orchestrations, actually, hmm. and uh, very detailed, like down to uh, conduct in two, conduct in four. And um, and it's also, as as we all know, it's a, it's a bit of a jazzy work. Now, it's not 
not typical as, jazz yeah. because I'm not actually improvising. But one could imagine that when Gershwin played it, he probably didn't actually play the exact notes that are now written down because of the idiom of mm-hmm. jazz. But it is fun for me as a like a classical, a traditional classical musician to feel like I'm adventuring loose into that a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or at least the illusion of letting loose and the illusion of improvising. And I, you know, I've I've listened to several recordings. My favorite happens to be Jean Yves Thibaudet. Oh, yes, um, yeah. With Baltimore and Marin Alsop. And, you know, he, it's it's just, it's very free. And he uh, he actually t- plays some very interesting things that are a little bit improvisatory, that are not like exactly, like very slight things mm-hmm. that one would notice. But it, it was very inspiring to me because I thought, yeah, this is, I don't think this would be the kind of um, piece, and I, and I say this and might be controversial, but it's not the kind of thing where you play exactly every single note that's written, and if you don't. That's interesting. You know, know, like yeah, in yeah. a Beethoven concerto, every single note is placed precisely, and if you mess with it and you change it, then it actually loses a lot of the meaning. Um, whereas in a work like this, if you add a little bit of, you know, add more octave, like, you know, if you have octaves in the right hand, but the left hand is playing a single note, why, why wouldn't you add an octave? doesn't really change the meaning. I'm not changing the harmonies, but just beefs it up a little more. So you do this on the fly? Or is it different every time you play it? Or um, it, it can be, but I mean, it's again, I'm not changing the score. Mm-hmm. I'm just maybe tweaking the orchestration of it, if you will, in the piano. You know, so it's that's kind of a fun thing. It's, it's a very fun project. And again, it's wearing that felt hat of Gershwin and kind of getting into the groove and um, mm-hmm. being also behind the beat as opposed to on top of the beat. You know, a lot of classical musicians we play on top of the beat. Like we're sort of anticipating and pushing forward. And with jazz, it's a bit like settled into the beat. Um, one of my dear friends is a prolific jazz musician, Fred Hirsch. And oh, Fred Hirsch, wonderful. Yeah, yeah wonderful amazing, player. amazing yeah. pianist. And I've played Gershwin for him before, just, you know, just to bounced some ideas off of him and he said look just make sure that you're really settled into it like you're sitting back in a chair as opposed to sitting forward and upright and like eager and moving forward and Hmm. where is it where is it you know um just be chill about it just kind of like hang out in the beat and so more laid back yeah interesting it's laid back and a, a little bit more like hey how's it going you know, mm-hmm. the American style. <laughs> well, and, and you know what? You've, uh, you're adventurous in that sense. You, you're, you've done a lot of different things. I mean, you know, a big part of your life, of course, is on the concert stage. But uh, you've done some soundtracks which, uh, for a Tchaikovsky film, which we'll talk about in a sec. And uh, you, uh, you've also recorded some Fred Hirsch music, correct? I have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Fred Hirsch is an amazing jazz piano player. Yeah. He's just got a whole plethora of great recordings yeah. Um, and but the pieces that you recorded of his were a little bit different, weren't they? Then they weren't as, were they typical his typical jazz stuff or no? It's definitely um, his uh, classical side. He mm-hmm. has a, he's written he's written a few things actually, and he's actually written a work for me based on um, a theme of Tchaikovsky. Um, this was not what I recorded. This was his character pieces, mm-hmm. of which are really beautiful and. Inspired by like his teacher, and they're very short, but really, really great stuff. And Fred, I would say, is definitely an adventurous person, and and mm-hmm. you can see that, and especially the variations which he wrote for me because each one is so different and it's so cool. And there's like really jazzy stuff, and um, and some just very beautiful or classical variations. That's on the Naxos label. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember yep. that one. That mm-hmm. one came out on Naxos. And I mentioned you also have a, you did a soundtrack or a score. Uh, there's some of your music in a in a biography of Tchaikovsky, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that you? You did the whole score, or they just chose a couple pieces of? They chose. It was mostly the first piano concerto that they focused on, and then I think they also had me play a trio, a selection from the trio. Um, it, that was that was a fun experience. It was fun to then see how they put it all together. How how did that work out? Like how did they how did you get connected with that project? 
Oh gosh, you know, I think they just reached out to my manager. I, I, I really don't know how these things work. I think you'd have to ask them. But You're just the performer. You just <laughs> yeah. Look, they paid me, and I showed up. <laughs> That's a good enough reason. Yeah. Well, it was actually really, really fun because it was um, uh, one of the few times I've been back to Russia and it was an amazing excuse to go back. Oh, you back. went back to Russia? To, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, they definitely filmed it on location. Huh. So we recorded it there and then, even though it's actually a um, BBC production, uh, we recorded it there and then and then I had to do a playback. Like, they, they played the recording and then they actually filmed the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was fun. I'd never done anything like that. It was... Really, really cool. And then again, it was neat how they put to see it then put together in the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned you went back to Russia because Russia was where you were born. You were eight years old, I think, mm -hmm. when you moved to California. Yep. And you say you don't go back that often. Do you still have family there you visit? And yeah, yeah, I have family, but... Um, I guess you're busy, you know. I mean, it's far, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Geography lesson for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's far. I know you. some people would say you can see it from Alaska. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Alaska's far too. <laughs> Alaska's far too. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, and there's just a whole different world, you know. It really is just a completely different world. Mm -hmm. And even as far as, like, the classical music scene is concerned, it's just very isolated. It's kind of got its own thing going on. Mm -hmm. and they've got their own people, and um, so, but... That was one of the, that was definitely an opportunity to visit St. Petersburg. I'd never been to St. Petersburg, so that was very exciting for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk quickly about adventure. And uh, I, I, I saw a video of you online uh, doing skydiving, <laughs> doing skydiving. And I have to say that I, that brought a smile to my face. I watched it and I was just, I, first of all, like I was, I was getting nervous watching <laughs> watching the whole thing, but uh, you're as I mentioned, you're adventurous. You do all sorts of different projects, and you've been and up on a plane and jumped out of a plane. Yeah. So congratulations to you for <laughs> <laughs> obviously not not afraid to take risks. Well, let's make it let's make something clear. I didn't do it alone. <laughs> you didn't do it alone. Yeah, I saw no, somebody. Yeah, it's definitely tandem. <laughs> and less people think that I'm a skydiver. I, that was a what, solo solo appearance. Just say that. <laughs> One people, night only. Just let people believe. Hey, she skydives too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm an hmm. avid skydiver. Avid I do it all the time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in fact, was... later today. <laughs> yeah, later today. <laughs> just before the show, you're going to drop in on people and skydive in yeah, front of the concert exactly. hall tomorrow night. <laughs> exactly. No, that was that was a fun thing. It was. It came at a rather challenging time in my life when my father was dying and my brother just sort of like grabbed me and was like, we're going to go skydiving. And mm. it was like, it was this weird way of, you know, taking your mind off the great sadness with good old adrenaline, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, shortly before I came here, actually, the first time. <laughs> that wow. was when that happened. That was fun. Yeah, I've never done it before, but I can imagine that when you do it, you must just feel the adrenaline, the life running through your veins. And is it... <sighs> What's the feeling you get when you're on stage? Do you, do you do you get an overwhelming? Is it the same feeling every time, or different, or uh, what do you feel like when you're performing on stage? Um, it's very different every time because there's always a different audience, you know, first and foremost. And there's, um, there I play many different halls and different pianos, different orchestras, maybe an orchestra, maybe chamber music, different musicians, um, and that always affects the energy in the room. Um, and even when you have, you know, a set of three and it's the same orchestra and it's the same hall, the three concerts, it's still different every time because different people come to the concert. And the fact is I feel that energy, mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it affects me and my choices, meaning my, my new choices when I'm on stage and in the moment, what I'm doing. You know, mm -hmm. because I can feel, I can just, it's hard to explain. It's sort of more metaphysical and, and less like, you know, I can like graph it for you, but, mm -hmm. or even express it through words. But it's, I think that's what I love most about performing is the spontaneity and the vibe 
of the people. And of course, everybody is always happy to be there. Let's just start with that. And they're excited to be there and experience the symphony and experience whatever we're playing. Um, but, you know, people bring their own their own day into the concert hall as well, mm -hmm. even though maybe some of them don't realize it. So, In everyday life, they bring it. It surrounds them every day, every, everywhere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to Gershwin, being that it's such a very much like large-scale chamber music concerto, uh, it also depends on, you know, what the musicians feel in that on that particular night. They're not going to play this ex same exact way every mm -hmm. single night. Maybe it'll be just phrased ever so slightly differently. And I will respond to that with what I'm doing. So that's... Or, or, you know, if Alexander feels a little bit differently about a phrase, and he might maybe do it just ever so slightly differently, it'll, um, I'll mirror that, or, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it exciting. So I you can, can go yeah. like three nights in a row and get completely different. So I guess the audience can go Friday night, they can go Saturday night and see maybe two different shows. <laughs> yeah, you saw right through me. <laughs> saw the tickets here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it's. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure tickets are selling pretty well. They always do, and it's going to be a fantastic performance. They're doing Copland. They're doing uh, Dvorak's New World Symphony as well as uh, the Gershwin. So it's great going to be program. a great way to start the start the year out. And yeah, um, I'm going to be there. Oh, I'm great! Gonna, I'm coming tomorrow night, so I'm looking forward to it. I'll bring some good energy. I'll bring some live energy and. If I jump up and clap, we'll see what happens uh, <laughs> in the middle of the piece <laughs> if I'm inspired to. <laughs> yeah, you should. I should. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel about that, by the way? How do you feel about people clapping? And does it put you off if somebody? No. No, you're so you're no. just focused and. Well, no. First of all, like, if people are, you know, experiencing joy based on what they just heard, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. My gosh, that's that's a gift to me. So, I love that. In fact, at this point, I actually it feels weird when people don't clap after the first movement. <laughs> like, Silence. oh my God, they hate it. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As they you know, walk, you know, oh my God, they're leaving. They couldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you like start looking out into the audience. You're like, so please stay. Clap. I'll play better. <laughs> <laughs> so if you heard that and hey, after the first moon, if you're, if you're moved to clap, by all means do it. Oh, even though, uh, you know, some people frown upon that kind of stuff. I well, don't know, you know, actually when most of this like, uh, most of this classical music was written in the 19th century and 18th century and beyond. I mean, people clapped all the time between movements. Mm -hmm. And they're, I mean, it's, I don't know. I think these traditions came along much later. But, ah, eh, traditions. Yeah, rules <laughs> are meant to be them. broken. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jump out of planes and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. All that kind of crazy and stuff. Gravity. <laughs> and gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, thank you very much for coming in this morning. And, uh, really looking forward to the show. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. You came at a great time because the weather is oh, yeah. just out of this world. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a fun show tomorrow and yeah. then in Brandon on Sunday. Yeah. So great. it's going to be a busy weekend for you. Looking forward uh, to it. I'm going to play a piece now, a Gershwin, Piano Concerto. Who's, mm. who's the pianist? Uh, Andre Previn. <gasps> oh, great. Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Wow. And... It's the final movement, so you know people are going to get up and clap after the final <laughs> movement. So. Hopefully. Ah, <laughs> they will. They will. I guarantee. Have a wonderful day. And, Thank you, uh, Michael. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Okay. Yes, absolutely.